All right, welcome back to WCCF Tech TV, everyone. This is Keith once again. And as you see before here, we have everything laid out for some testing live. See if I can get in the camera there. Hi, guys. So now that I'm out of the way, so what the deal is here is over the past few days, there's been a lot of talk about Vega 64 and its ability to mine extremely efficiently at Ethereum. So uh, I was at work when the news broke, and during my lunch break, I took, made some really quick tests that showed it maybe not quite mining as well as uh, somebody on reddit had explained but just like i told everybody on the site and anybody that's asked and why i haven't published anything is i didn't have time to fully test it all i had time to do was just run through one quick set and be done with it and so what we got here is just to show you this is radeon rx vega pulled up this is our i7-6800k it's at stock frequency so no overclocking with 32 gigs of ddr4 uh, 2400 ram with a corsair ax 860i power supply and obviously the liquid cooled edition of the radeon vega 64 and i was hesitant to do this to begin with because i didn't want to focus on mining with this card i was uh, i'm part of the way through getting started on a lot of the benchmarks for it as well as different testing that you guys wanted to see but i had to take a minute bring it back over here off the test bench put it in my system to show you this so we've got the kilowatt set up here hopefully i don't knock it down but it's showing the idle wattage right now is 124 to 128 to 30 so 120 to 130 ranging at idle and we have hw info 64 up here and it shows gpu core power at 1.3 watts and memory power at 0.08 watts so what I'm going to do is, now that we've got this out of the way, we're going to go ahead and close this. I've got Wattman pulled up, and we're going to use that to adjust settings as we go to see the reaction that it has. But I'm going to go ahead and kick off the Claymore Miner for Ethereum. Now, this is at its current DAG file and everything, and we are using the see, DAG uh, 147, and we are using the... Uh, the blockchain driver. So we're not using the 17.8.2 uh, driver, we're using the one for blockchain so that we can get kind of the most out of it. So this is it at default settings to see the power draw. See, our total speed is 37.68 mega hashes per second, and we're pulling four between about four. Look, you see here it's fluctuating between 380 and 465. So when I gave the results, to the site earlier for the mining, it was its peak point. So what it does is it fluctuates up and it fluctuates down. So a lot of sites will record the average hash rate. I tend to focus on like worst case scenario, like where you're gonna hit with it. So 385 to 165, see 400, 465. It's, it fluctuates a lot. So we're looking at about 160 uh, in, in the 160 range on the top end. So, and according to HWinfo64, with GPU cores at 100 and GPU memory is at 131 watts. I have a hard time believing that the HBM is pulling that much power, but that's its reading there. I'm more worried about this, what it's pulling from the wall for the system while it's mining. All right, so now that we've got it up and running, let's go ahead and make some of the tweaks that we did first off to try and match. So uh, we changed this to 1000 megahertz for the core and I changed the memory or the, the voltage to one millivolt. I could run it at 980 millivolts, but I set it to a thousand millivolts or one volt. Uh, frequency for the memory, we never changed the voltage um, control for the memory, but the memory we went to 1100. So we changed that to 1100 and for span speed, we left it here so that it it ramps all the way up so it'll keep it pretty well in check under control you see we're at 51c 52c so we're going to our power limit and we're going to take it down to 25 which is not as easy there we go all right so we're going to hit apply and i'm going to minimize that and we're going to take a look at the power draw see uh 380 is where we're topping out now so 380 is our top end and it's dropping down to like 340 334 to 380. um We'll give it a second for our, our speed to catch up there. When you make a big change like that, a lot of times it doesn't respond right away. It takes it a minute to respond. And we'll see kind of where that sets in in just a second. So there we are. We're at 43 mega hashes per second. Hopefully that's on the screen. Yeah. 43 mega hashes per second between 340 and 380 watts. So that's down around 100 watts. Okay. So it's great. So 43.64. Oh, crap. Let me get that back up there so we can keep everything in line. 
All right, so that's kind of ugly, but whatever. We're going to roll with it. So back into 43, dropped our power to 330, 380, and our GPU core power went up to 112 watts, but our memory power went down to 83 watts. So you see the dynamic change there. So, okay, this was the key. This was the one that I gave the guys because I had just enough time to come home and set this up and show them. But here was the catch. What we got from when the Redditor posted more information, he showed that his voltage control was actually on auto. So we're going to change that back to auto. So leave it at automatic. And we're going to see what happens there. What I wanted to touch on right quick was about 360 is where we've gotten down to uh, total system draw to stay somewhere close to it. And again, it's fluctuating a little bit because I have changed things and accidentally closed everything out and had to get started again. But what I want to do real quick is I do want to load the air BIOS onto it because this is the liquid cooled again, and I'm not certain how well, how much of that plays into it. But what we're going to do is I'm going to stop the video for just a second, and I'm going to load on the air cooled BIOS, and we're going to restart it and see kind of where things land in. So with the magic of editing, it'll only take a second. All right, so we've gotten the air-cooled BIOS on here, and we've gotten it down to 1,000 megahertz with um, auto voltage and the memory back up to 1,100 megahertz, as well as the power limit down to negative or minus 25% on the power limit. Problem is, our results sit around, which there was a big dip there, but uh, sits around 37 mega hashes rather than the 43 plus. However, the big change was down to 250 watts total. So that actually gets the car down to about 120. It gets it to the 120, 130 watt average that the air-cooled version gets. So again, taking into consideration the water pump, the TDP of the card, all of the factors that differentiate the liquid-cooled version from the air-cooled version, I see it as quite possible to yeah pull 130 watts while um, mining with this card that's actually pretty impressive so and another thing that i did notice with the air cooled bios on here is a lot of fluctuations in the memory speed so it's again it's highly likely and quite feasible with the right settings and enough tweaking you could get around 130 watts to 150 watt power draw from the rx vega 64 which is absolutely impressive for what it is and you know so i uh, didn't really think actually started this thinking that i was going to completely disprove it but again taking in the differences between the air cooled and the liquid cooled version of vega 64 it's actually really neat to see how well vega scale can scale back on power draw and still put out results of some type which is something that we started seeing in gaming performance so we're going to spend a lot of our time looking at how to tweak it and how to get the most out of it, it looks like. So, again, this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. And if you found this video entertaining or informative, you guys know what to do. And as always, we will catch you in the next video.